Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Thanks so much for joining this webinar, Transform Your Website Strategy for 2022. Before we get started, I wanted to go through a bit of housekeeping. So on the right hand side of your screen, you will see the QA section where you can submit questions to us so that we can address them at the end or in follow ups. Um, let me first introduce ourselves. So I'm Liv and I'm the Web Solutions Manager here at Clerkswell and Georgie is our Account Director. We'll be talking to you today. For those of you who don't know who Clerkswell are, we're an award-winning digital agency based in London. We are a Microsoft Gold Partner and we specialise in building dynamic and high-performing websites using the Sitecore and Umbraco platforms. We also offer hosting of our websites on Azure. As you can see, we work with a broad range of organisations across both the public and private sector and across many sectors such as finance, construction, legal, through to government and education. Some of our clients like the CIPD, who are a membership organisation, have been working with us for over 20 years. So why are we doing this webinar? Building a web strategy is a fundamental process that all marketing and web teams face, often with limited knowledge of how to run projects of this nature, both internally and in collaboration with a digital partner. At Clerksville, we want to enable our clients to make decisions which enhance their digital strategy without the stress. Every year, new trends emerge, which will have a direct influence on not only how you will use your website to engage customers, but how you approach the strategy in general. With that in mind, we've designed an agenda that for some of you will act as a blueprint, for others maybe a helpful reminder of the areas on which to focus your planning. So firstly, we'll go through the fundamentals, goal, budget, timescale, team. Then we'll move on to choosing the correct technology, engaging your target audience, web as an element of your broad digital strategy. And finally, we'll share one of our success stories. We'll cover these fundamentals in just 20 minutes. I'm sure there will be loads you can take back to your organisation. And of course, we'd love to talk to you in more detail about anything you hear today. So please do get in touch afterwards. I'll pass you over to Georgie now, who's going to kick off our first agenda point, the fundamentals. Thanks, Liv. As we said, there are a number of essential building blocks that you should consider when designing a web strategy. These include goal setting, budgeting and timescales, and your internal team. So it all starts with goal setting. It is critical that your company goals are reviewed collaboratively within the business to avoid conflict or confusion down the line. If you don't make your expectations clear within the team at this early stage, you could see issues between internal teams later on. We see this a lot. Web and product managers will run with an idea, arrange their budgets, and sometimes even start development only to be told that their company is not interested in completing the project. Most projects we work on are focused on driving online engagement. We do this by increasing web personalization, improving accessibility, and providing easier sharing capabilities. We make these strategies clear right at the start with those key project goals. Often goals take time to realize, so the collaboration of both parties is so important to form an ongoing partnership throughout the project. Goal setting is therefore the crucial first step to monitoring progress. With your goals established and prioritised, you will then need to seek the appropriate budget to execute them. Goals should be executed in phase stages. We'd recommend collaborating with an external agency to understand the complexity of your goals before creating that phased roadmap. It is during this stage where you understand the level of investment that the project will require. Our account managers are invested in helping our clients see the value of the project quickly and will help you prioritise goals to ensure confidence in your senior team. We find this often leads to more work in the future with even greater levels of complexity. Finally is your internal team. We often see our clients facing challenges concerning design, infrastructure changes, documentation and general optimisations. Depending on the size of your organisation, you may have all of these resources available internally, but you may need to outsource them. A strong digital partner will be able to provide support for all these issues on your behalf, ensuring that the project is as successful as it can be. Thanks, Georgie. Now we're going to move on to choosing the correct platform on which to manage and build your website. This is an essential element of your digital and web strategy because technology is an important enabling factor on the success of your website. 
Content management systems and digital experience platforms have different functionality and one will help you meet your goals far easier than another. So content management systems, often referred to as CMSs, are the platforms on which you build, manage and create content for your website. WordPress is a well-known example. CMSs are scalable and responsive and help manage content delivery, content delivery, editing, reporting, all in a secure environment. For small and medium organisations, CMSs provide all the tools needed to run a successful website. Our favourite is Umbraco. A digital experience platform, on the other hand, is more advanced and allows you to perform omni-channel content management, analytics, personalisation and much more thanks to third party plugins on top of all the functions of a CMS. However, these can be more expensive. Our favourite is Sitecore. I'm going to now share our eight top tips when choosing a platform. So the first one, don't build custom or in-house content management software. Your team will not have the combined years of experience which have gone into building the industry leading platforms. Next, you need to consider your budget. So due to the difference in price points for the licensing of these technologies, we normally recommend for small and medium sized organisations to use Umbraco, a content management system which is open source and free for the majority of its features. And for larger enterprises with a higher budget and most of the time more channels to more channels and sites to manage, we would normally recommend Sitecore, a digital experience platform, as it is a more intelligent and analytical platform. This is not always the case and will depend on the digital goals of your organisation. Next, avoid heavy developer reliance. So make sure you pick a content management solution that enables your team to focus on implementing campaigns and strategies instead of spending excessive amounts of time on managing the technology. Remember that these platforms are used predominantly by your marketing team, not the technology team. And Braco is known for being the friendly and easy to use platform. Next, scalability is key. So it's crucial that you select a platform that matches your organization now and in the future. So choose a CMS or DXP solution that can quickly grow and scale as needed. Both Sitecore and Umbraco are known for being scalable. Um, next, you need to consider if omnichannel is a priority. So with digital campaigns being so important to reach customers, an omnichannel platform supports all digital content, ensuring consistency of experience across all digital channels. Both Umbraco and Cycle can support this. Next, we're going to move on to API integration for microservices. So Umbraco and Cycle will allow you to integrate numerous APIs. These are essentially connections to third party tools. It's important to choose a platform that easily adapts to new system and acts as the heart and core of the technical operation. Since the DXP like Sitecore integrates seamlessly with other systems such as CRMs, CEMs, contact centres, social media, etc., they provide holistic 360 degree view of your user. They automatically collate the user data into easy to understand dashboards, giving you data driven deep insights on your users. These are features that are more associated with DXPs such as Sitecore. Fortunately, Umbraco has also introduced the U Marketing Suite at an extra cost to allow you to better target users with quality content. We'll talk about this more in greater detail later in the webinar. And finally, if you're unsure on what technology best suits your organization down to individual add-ons or development features, you can ask for a proof of concept from your agency, which essentially outlines before you carry out the development work, how the item would work and its business case. Essentially, if you're looking for a secure and very easy, very easy to use platform on which to build your website, then a CMS like Umbraco is the perfect answer for you. In our opinion, it tops WordPress in many aspects. This is because WordPress has too many plugins which aren't customizable. This slows down site performance and also for global companies, their multilingual features are not as strong when compared to CMSs such as Umbraco. For large enterprises, if you're looking to totally engage your digital audience and create a solu solution that answers their specific needs every turn of the journey, you might need a DXP solution such as Sitecore. As we said, this will mean spending more money and will require a higher reliance on developers. Now let's talk about the main purpose of your website, targeting and engaging your users. This is where we must consider how user behaviour has changed, particularly since the pandemic and some of the core principles to follow. So since the pandemic, user behaviour has changed in the following ways. Online content consumption has nearly doubled since 2020. This means your users will have diversified or increased. 
Since users are now buying, researching and collaborating online, they expect a higher quality experience when they want where they want to get the information they need efficiently and have an enjoyable time. This means balancing simplicity with interactivity and design. Once upon a time, it was fine for websites to be an online directory of information, but content is not enough to engage users anymore. This is where JavaScript and APIs are creating dynamic online experiences. Organisations need to therefore understand the components of a website that contribute to a good user experience and those that contribute negatively. Um, here are the sort of, here's a sort of acronym we follow to make sure our websites have good UX. Uh, the acronym's can do uh, It's not really a word, but <laughs> it's a bit of a joke we have here. Um, so firstly, your website needs to be credible. It needs to be accessible, have good navigation, um, have desirable content, be useful and be interactive. So credible, users must trust and believe what you tell them accessible content needs to be accessible to people with disabilities and impairments it should load quickly and perform well navigation users should be able to intuitively navigate around your site through clear signposting and calls to action desirable so not everything is about function content must match your brand and look attractive and if done right can considerably improve the user experience useful your website content needs to fulfill a desire or requirement don't bulk out the page for the sake of it and finally, interactive. Websites need to have a way for users to log in, like content, give feedback, sign up, play or learn from content. However, your user, UX basics will only go so far in creating a consistently engaging um, experience for users. And so we've got two top tips that we want you to follow for next year, for 2022. Um, you need to be making sure that personalization and accessibility are a priority. Uh, there are, of course, many more things that you could consider um, for next year, and we will help you um, write a list of these. But we believe that these two should be at the top. Um, we think they're very important for next year. Um, so for personalization, we've reached a point where users will expect a certain level of personalization within their digital experiences, meaning once they have proven their interest in a particular area of content, their home page content or other areas of the site should evolve to guide them to related items. And organisations have already started to realise its importance for customer retention and building loyalty. Within Sitecore, for example, you can gain an in-depth understanding of user profiles displayed in a consumer dashboard that uses A-B and multivariate testing methods to generate targeted and relevant consumer information and content. Um, this gives your consumers real-time recommendations, geo-specific recommendations and personalised tailored content. Within the e-marketing suite from Umbraco, you can now also have analytics, A-B testing, personalisation and personas all in one place. Secondly, for 2022, you need to be considering whether your website can accommodate for visitors with visual or auditory impairments. You might have heard of um, a standard called WACAG 2.0. It's um, very important that in particular that public sector organisations are um, striving for this standard. Um, so you can do this by incorporating third party accessibility tools, which include screen readers, video transcriptions, design for dark mode, font scaling and contract adjustment. Incorporating these accessibility features ensure you can engage with more users and will also have a positive impact on your SEO. We are experts at both personalization and accessibility and will help you incorporate both of them within your web strategy to improve your existing websites or build a new one. As you can see, we at Clerkswell are passionate about the technology which allows us to understand our clients' users. Now we're going to move on and talk about how your web strategy fits within a broader area of your business. I'm going to hand you back over to Georgie. Thanks, Liv. As we just mentioned, accessibility and personalisation should be incorporated into your digital strategy for next year. But building a coherent and consistent web strategy means coordinating all the other more physical elements of your digital marketing strategy, including those responsible for social media, content, email and branding in your business. A digital strategy cannot be achieved in isolation. The purpose of a website, quite literally, is to be a digital presence. Imagine your website as the shop front of your organisation. Here it acts as the dominant experience for your brand. The look and feel of your site, your messaging and your content are all critical in ensuring customers 
experience your brand in the way that you want them to. And you, when your company expands over time, these elements need to be updated regularly to accurately reflect your mission and overarching values. Imagine a shop front changing the decoration for each season. This happens to make sure the shop stays relevant and attractive to potential customers. The same goes for your website. So let's get into why this matters when you consider other marketing channels like email and social media. Firstly, email is a means of direct communication. This should be leveraged for your most loyal customers. The aim here is to drive traffic to your website and convert the user into a customer, no matter where they are in their user journey. This can be done by using targeted or personalized content. The content should be carefully planned out, drawing the user into your shopfront website and pushing them to convert. Next, we have social media. Social media provides a platform for community building. This could be extremely beneficial if you build a community around your business where your consumers share and exchange content on a more personal level. Your website should accommodate both email and social media audiences, offering as much personalization and relevance as possible. Returning to the metaphor, you think of social media and the email as the flyer you hand out in the street. This draws the customer into the shop, which should translate into your digital world. Considering your holistic digital world, I want to share one of our recent projects with you. Our work with the Association of the British Pharmaceuticals Industry, or the ABPI, illustrates how you can use all these elements to transform your digital strategy. For background, the ABPI is the trade association for over 120 companies in the UK producing prescription medicines. Their member companies develop, manufacture and supply 80% of the medicines described, prescribed through the NHS. Their mission is to make the UK the best place in the world to research, develop and use new medicines, with their members supplying cutting edge treatments that improve and save the lives of millions of people. The initial phase of this project was to rebuild their corporate website. Their goal here was to create a more attractive and user friendly site, which was pretty straightforward. Following the success of this project, however, we started to suggest more strategic options, which would unleash the potential of the digital ecosystem. The ABPI had five other sites that were not on the Umbraco platform. This made it difficult for them to manage each, each site and impossible to share content. We solved this issue by consolidating these sites onto one single code base. This reduced the overhead of managing multiple sites significantly and allowed them to spin up new microsites independently and with ease. When we delivered this work for them, we also encouraged them to move their hosting to Umbraco SaaS, helping them to realise the many benefits that this would offer. The latest project actually went live just last week. This is a new website designed by us and created on the single code base for ABPI schools. The ABPI schools site is a hub that provides educational resources to teachers and students related to medical practice. As mentioned, the site is built using Umbraco, which remains the most appropriate platform because it is highly intuitive, meaning the ABPI can update content themselves. This is a huge selling point for clients as it means they can be as self-sufficient as possible. This is also great for us as it allows us more time to focus on strategic opportunities that enhance digital platforms, reach wider audiences and drive higher engagement. We provided the design and UX resources on this project and as you can see, there's a marked improvement. Our UI and UX designers place a huge emphasis on creating highly accessible digital experiences that ensure visual and audio impairments do not affect site navigation, the use of resources or during general interactions. Accessibility at Clarksville isn't just considered from a design perspective, we consider functionality too. For this reason, we integrated the third party tool RecyteMe into every page, which provides functions such as screen reading, colour contrast, magnification and automatic language translation. Even without this tool though, the site was built to meet WACAG 2.0 AA accessibility criteria. To summarise, their new solution is not only more aesthetic, but also fully responsive across devices. This ensures that ABPI's new brand is future-proof for years to come. To make things even better, Umbraco is a totally scalable platform, giving the ABPI the tools to adjust the site as they wish and continually upgrade content in line with syllabus changes. We have many more success stories on our website, which you can check out after the webinar.
So we've looked at a lot here today. Firstly, we looked at the fundamentals, goal setting, collaborative working within your organisation and with your chosen digital partner. Next, we shared eight top tips when it comes to assessing the right platform for your business. This should be based on your future ambitions and choosing a technology stack that will enable growth. We ran through this year's trends, where we looked in closer detail at two key areas our clients are targeting for website optimization, personalization and accessibility. Next, we touched on the broader digital strategy, detailing how your website is arguably the most important factor as it acts as the window into your organization. Lastly, you saw a case study for our client in the ABPI. We've done an awful lot for the ABPI, including microsites, rebranding and hosting. So get in touch if you want to know more about any of these services. That goes for anything else you've heard today. We'd love to listen to your plans and help you find solutions to your digital problems. One last note, we've had a fair few questions pop up while we've been presenting, so we'll follow up on those directly after the session. Thank you so much for joining and we hope you have a great day.